All right, so now we're going to go into the future. Um, just show of hands here for me. Who here is worried about the metaverse? Let's see. Okay, so some of you guys. Okay, perfect. Um, well, we're going to try to demystify what's happening in that space as we go through. But before I start and get into what is the metaverse and all that fun stuff, um, I do want you to think about your city. What does your city look like in the next 100 years? I am a professionally trained uh, futurist, so I do strategic foresight among many other things. Uh, so I always try to think about what are the, 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 the trends or the, the things that are happening that I'm interested in exploring. These are the three, three things that I'm most interested in exploring which is better understanding intelligence. We are going to talk about generative AI, which is obviously every, a lot, something that a lot of people are talking about. Um, outward, outward into space to look at you know, what's happening there. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to spend our time mostly in the virtual shared experiences or the virtual world. Um, but I do think, you know, and I say this in every one of my talks, uh, in order for us to th truly think about the next 100 years, we have to address issues of today, like they were mentioning, it's great to think about futuristic things, but what are the problems of today? And how can we start to use technology today to solve those, whether it is climate change or security or traffic patterns, whatever it is. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about the metaverse and me. I've been in metaverse-related industries for 10 years. <laughs> that sounds like a long time. I've worked in companies like HTC Vive, which does VR devices, worked at Magic Leap, uh, which does augmented reality glasses. Uh, when I worked there, uh, the man next to my avatar in the hoodie is Neil Stevenson, who wrote um, a sci-fi, very, very well-known sci-fi author who was our chief futurist at Magic Leap, and he wrote Snow Crash. He coined the term metaverse. Um, and I've been working in spaces, uh, metaverse-related industries for many, many years. So let's talk a little bit about this beyond the hype. There's a lot of hype around the word metaverse. Obviously, you know, a lot of people were like, what is this metaverse thing? It kind of started to become this hype cycle. Um, the truth is that the metaverse is not here yet. We're building it. It is being built today, right? So we're talking about something that's not fully here in its full expression. So it's still very early on, and I'm telling you that because everyone's really obsessed with the metaverse or doing something in the metaverse right now. So before I get into trying to define uh, this very interesting moment in time, I want to talk a little bit about the past. So in Web 1.0, we connected information that gave us the internet, that gave us, you know, uh, that changed a lot of things. Uh, and I do want to say any talk about the internet has to have cats, of course. Uh, so obviously, you know, you got some cats here. Uh, in Web 2.0, we connected people. And that gave us, yes, social media. But it also gave us the sharing economy and gave us e-commerce. Right? What's happening right now is that we're in this moment where we're moving from Web 2.0 into Web 3. Right? We're in a kind of a Web 2.5 moment right now. And what happens in Web 3.0, Web 3, is that you connect people places and things, or people, spaces, or assets, right? And when you do that, it changes the way you engage with these people, spaces, and assets. Those people, spaces, places uh, can be in virtual environments, but it will also be the physical world. So what is the metaverse? I'll be very honest with you, it is hard to define. Right? It is very hard to have a definition, but for those of you that really want one, uh, this is how I see it. It makes our world into combined <clears throat> experiences, both in the virtual and the physical. It is about virtual shared experiences that happen both in virtual spaces, but also the physical world. It is a more immersive, more social, more persistent form of internet that is 3D and all around us. Uh, if you wanted more of a textbook definition, if you're an academic out there and really want a textbook definition, uh, this is a great definition for my friend Matthew Ball, um, you know, in case you want to have that more of an academic perspective as what, to, what the metaverse is. I'll tell you what it is made of. It is not one single technology and it is not one single company. You're going to hear me say that throughout the talk. It is enabled by many different technologies. The metaverse is not one single technology. It is enabled by AR and VR. A lot of you out there, when you hear the term metaverse, you immediately hear people talk about virtual reality or Ready Player One. Yes, we've all watched the movie, right? But that is not necessarily the metaverse, nor should we want that to be the metaverse because that was pretty dystopic sci-fi. Um, but AR, VR, our mobile devices are enabling technologies, spatial computing, gaming. I'll be talking a lot about gaming. Uh, 5G, 6G, Wi-Fi 6, the blockchain component is pretty important. Cloud computing, you almost can grab any tech jargon and throw it at this, and it'll be an enabling technology. So the metaverse is not one single technology or one single company. 
When you talk, when you hear people talk about Web3 and the metaverse, what is the difference here is that they're intrinsically linked, but they're not the same thing. When people talk about the metaverse, they're talking about how we will experience the future of the internet, the successor state to today's mobile internet. When people talk about Web3, they're talking about how these people, places, and things are connected. So I personally do not seek to define it. I seek to build it. It is something that's not here yet that we can all build together. And why does this matter? Because especially for the younger generations, what happens in virtual spaces is real to them, right? My son's first concert was during the pandemic and it was actually Little Nas X in Roblox. And he will say, I was there, I was there, I saw Nas. Uh, show of hands, how many of you here are gamers? or have kids that are playing, Ro grandkids or kids that play Roblox, Fortnite, okay. So all our money is going to them. <laughs> all our money is going to gift cards in Roblox and V-Bucks. But what happens in virtual spaces is real to this group of people. And this is where gaming gets really important. So it's not all fun and games, but gaming is the parent to the metaverse. Gaming is the on-ramp. A lot of these virtual experiences, whether they're VR or AR or whatever they are, they're built on gaming engines. Companies like Unity or Unreal are helping create the building blocks. So it's not all fun and games, but gaming is a very important part and one of the ways that people access um, this future state of the metaverse. Why does this matter? Because eventually we are gonna move from our phones into glasses, right? Even if Apple delays their augmented reality glasses, some news that came out this week, we are gonna be heading this way. It's not me saying, it, saying this, it's all the tech companies out there, they're putting billions of dollars into augmented reality types of wearables. There's only so many more cameras we can add to our phones, as you guys know, every year, <laughs> so. And you almost have to start thinking about our world in layers, right? There's a physical layer, we're in, in the city of Washington, D.C., this is layer zero. There's a data layer on top of that. We don't really see that. Uh, but there's all these virtual layers, right? And eventually when you have those glasses, you're gonna be able to see that content. You won't see it in ones and zeros like computers and robots do. We're gonna see it in form of annotations, holograms, all sorts of things. So you almost have to start to think about the world in multiple layers. What does this mean? What is the impact of the metaverse? For society, it does have important societal implications. The concept of work will evolve. Uh, my son, for example, he is a developer in Roblox. He is 10 years old. And sometimes he makes up to $100 a month developing in Roblox. Like, I was not making $100 <laughs> when I was 10 years old. But there is this, this evolution, right? And I always, I do a lot of work in the fashion space. I always say the world's next Coco Chanel might be a 10-year-old girl designing skins in Roblox. But it is unlocking creativity in ways we've never seen before, and we are gonna talk about generative AI. Uh, it is evolving and changing, and is making the world machine readable. So that has huge implications for anyone designing cities. It also means that customers are exploring new identities, or exploring new brands, new products. It will create new revenue streams, right? It's not about making money, but there are gonna be opportunities. And it will start to enable new customer journeys and touch points. What is the market opportunity? There's tons of numbers out there. You know, I'm not gonna tell you a specific number. There's tons of projections from McKinsey, Deloitte, you name it. Uh, but it puts it, you know, in a pretty big amount. It's in the trillions of dollars, possibly. What I tell anyone is it is way too big to ignore, right? So a lot of cities, I'm already seeing a lot of cities and countries start to think about what are they doing in this convergence of physical and digital as we move forward. I was having dinner with friends. Let's watch this video for a second. And he had some kids, and there was like a 13-year-old, a 15-year-old, a 17-year-old. And the, uh, they hadn't seen the film The Matrix. And so the director's like, well, why don't you just tell them what it's about? So I start to say, well, there's this guy who's in a kind of virtual world, and he finds out that there's a real world, and he's really questioning what's real and not real, and he really wants to know what's real. And the young girl was like, why? And I was like, what do you mean? She was like, who cares if it's real? Mm. And I was like, what, you don't, you don't care if it's real? And she was like, no. Isn't that wild? It's awesome. So don't take it from me, take it from Keanu and the Matrix. Um, but yeah, this is a shift in mindset that's happening, right? So what is the market opportunity? It's mostly the Gen Cs and Gen Alphas of the world. 
Um, enter generative AI, which has taken over the headlines. Who here is using ChatGPT? Anyone experiment? Okay, good, good. Folks are experimenting with it. Um, this is, you know, if you need an explanation, this is kind of an explanation. Uh, it is using AI uh, to generate new content, content using prompts. So there's ChatGPT, which I just mentioned, which is uh, text. There's DALI and MidJourney, which are images. And a lot of people are starting to use generative AI. You're going to see this become even more important uh, with open AI, you know. But this is what I'll tell you. The good news is that I don't think AI will replace us, the, you know, AI overlords are not going to replace us. The bad news is that the people that know, learn to work with AI really well probably will, right? So you're starting to see <clears throat> potential new jobs, creative AI director, someone that's really good at prompting AI and getting a great image or a great, you know, great output. Uh, you could eventually even have AI city designers, people that work with AI to create virtual twins and to truly understand what the impact of data is on that city uh, and, you know, in real time, updatable and working with AI. Uh, there is also a huge, um, I think, impact on human-centered AI and everything that's going on. So AI kind of will become that companion, uh, and it will help us navigate the metaverse, especially remember how I mentioned glasses? If we are going to be wearing glasses in the future, we're probably not going to be typing into virtual keyboards. We're probably going to be speaking to our glasses. So there is a component there of generative AI. So now I'll talk to you guys a little bit on how I metaverse, and I am using it as a verb, uh, but just to inspire some ideas and thoughts on how you know, how it is being used. I'm gonna play this video first and then I'll kind of talk a little bit about it. I can't help but feel that there's a creativity renaissance upon us and what we build matters more than ever. As the co-founder of Journey, I am not the typical face that you see when you think of technology. So that's why it's important for everyone to know that this future is for all of us. In the metaverse, we are all world builders, and this is our time to build. Let's think not to define the metaverse, but let's build it and create it together. Here are the opening bells at the NASDAQ Journey Innovation and Design Consultancy. It is Journey, creator of immersive experiences, ringing the bell in the metaverse. Dramatic effect <laughs> at the end. Uh, why am I showing you this video? It's because there is an, a kind of an eagerness to merge the physical and the digital. I was the first person ever in the world to open the markets both in avatar form and in physical form. You're going to start to see a lot more of this happening, right? This is already here. It is not going away. It is moving forward. Um, let me move forward. Other things that are happening in this space, and this is of interest to cities, offices being open in virtual spaces, right? Um, so, for example, my company, Journey, has offices in Roblox and Fortnite and Core and a lot of these different platforms. Uh, we use them, you know, yes, to show our clients what we can do, but you know what we're using them for? We're also using them for recruiting. And, you know, if anyone's been following the news, Accenture, for example, is onboarding thousands of employees every year uh, using virtual reality. So you're going to start to see this. And cities are already involved in this. You've got, you know, um, there's certain cities, for example, Seoul, uh, the city of Seoul just announced a big metaverse push. Dubai, for example, has a big push on metaverse as well and opening virtual, uh, virtual you know, spaces in these, uh, in these you know, worlds. Um, I also work with a lot of brands trying to figure out how they can create loyalty communities uh, in these virtual spaces. So whether it is Clinique or Procter & Gamble, all these brands are jumping into trying to figure out how to engage with these new audiences, these new customer journeys and touch points, focused on Gen C but also Gen Alpha. Using these technologies, the government's already using these technologies. They've been using them for a long time. This is uh, a project I worked on with the Air Force. Uh, that is the former chief futurist at the Air Force. And what we did is he had a uh, futures report. It was 90 pa a 90 page PDF uh, that I said, that's great. I'm not sure everyone's going to read that. I said, let's take that 90 page PDF and use these technologies, in this case, virtual reality and volumetric video, which in is holograms uh, in some way, 
and kind of put people and, and the Pentagon inside these four potential futures. So how do we start to use these technologies to visualize whether it is you know, four potential futures or whether it is climate change or how your city is gonna look in the future, right? So these are very, very powerful technologies for visualization. Um, I do a lot of work, for example, with the city of Orlando. So the city of Orlando is, uh, has named themselves the Meta Center. They are doing a very big push for uh, being one of the centers of innovation for a metaverse. Uh, they actually worked on creating a virtual twin, which you can see here with Unity, one of those game engines I mentioned. And it is updatable in real time. They're able to look at traffic patterns. Uh, virtual twins are nothing new to cities, but I think that adding a big element of AI uh, is gonna be quite interesting. Uh, and this is the first mayoral, um, the first mayoral, mayoral address in the metaverse uh, by Mayor Dyer a couple weeks ago. So they're really focusing on that, on what they can bring. Uh, they have one of the highest concentrations of AR and VR faculty and one of the biggest number of licenses of Unity game, of the Unity game engine. So you're gonna start to see more and more cities start to think about how can they attract talent, what is their part of the metaverse. The metaverse, this is really important, even though there's a lot of innovation coming from Silicon Valley, innovation is no longer centralized in one place, right? It is, it is being decentralized into many different places. Um, also, people are building community. This is my community, the people of the metaverse. I hold um, metaverse salons all across the world, uh, just to bring together the thought leaders, philosophers, and thinkers of today to think about how we can you know, use, create, use our intelligence to solve problems and use creativity. So what does this mean for you, for everyone in the, sitting here? It means that it is an era of reinvention, right? There's gonna be new infrastructure created. There's gonna be new opportunities. There's gonna be new ways to do city design. You're gonna have new constituents. Like Gen Alpha is gonna expect very different things from you. And there are gonna be new companies created. There are potential risks and challenges as with, it is with everything. Uh, but there's also new opportunities. Some of the risks and challenges, because we have to not be naive, uh, it is around, there's a lot of things around security, how do you safeguard a lot of these virtual worlds, intellectual property, there's actually some really interesting cases right now being uh, you know, uh, debated in court. Uh, it is something of geopolitical in the sense that China's vision of the future of the metaverse is very much different than the vision that the Western world has, just like the internet um, happened. But yeah, there's a lot of different things happening here when it comes to those potential risks and challenges as we move forward. So before I leave you, um, I want to show you a video of what it could look like for you, a day in the life of the, Met you know, if you're living in the metaverse with glasses. Play music. Okay. There's been an update to your calendar. Show calendar. an accident ahead. Should I show you an alternate route? Yes. Show bio. Save to libraries. Oh, hey, Jordan. Hey, Rory. Yeah. saw this on my right end. Might be cool. Climb half down. It seems that you're making lasagna. Should I turn on the oven? Yes. Preheat oven to 400. Open preferences. In the metaverse, we are all world builders, and now is our time to build. Uh, mostly the younger generation understands world building. They're gaming, but they're also building their own worlds and their own games. Um, I do want to mention, uh, I have a book that just came out, I just came back from speaking at the World Economic Forum's annual meeting in Davos about the metaverse. I was able to launch my book there. I brought some free copies. I, it's, there's not enough for everyone, uh, but there are some free copies outside if you guys want to explore the metaverse a little bit more. 
Um, but yeah, the metaverse is really hard to define. We're building it today, but it is the successor state to today's mobile internet. So if the internet has impacted your city, your business, your company, the metaverse will too. So thank you very much.